in. Hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. Joey Tice across from me, Malik Hill. And, um, man, we are into the best part of the year, in my opinion. Football season, we got college. NFL is starting this week. Week one for the NFL season, and I could not be more excited. That's why I'm I'm lounging today. I'm chilling, sitting back, um, ready to do our first week of picks. Um, knowing that I'm going to get off to a hot start like usual and Malik's going to slowly claw away at my lead and take the win on you the gotta, You got to have some confidence to start picks. Well, I, I have some confidence, to. but um, things just, can I, change. Just know how things happen. So I'm going <laughs> to. Things can change. And maybe I'll have like a little reverse jinx going on. Um, but first, we got we to gotta talk about college football. We had week one of college football last weekend. We got to see both Michigan and Michigan State in action. Um, and then it, it it was something. It was an experience. It it was that's, something. That's what it was. Um, I had committed to watching both games the entire way through. And I don't know if that was the right choice or not. <laughs> um, but I did it. Uh, and we started with MSU taking on FAU yep. in East Lansing. First sight of Aiden Childs. And things got weird. It kind of went as expected, but also a little bit farther than expected as well. Um, there's definitely some hope for this team, um, at least for the future. I, I wouldn't say maybe this year, perhaps, but you can see the potential in Aiden. I'll say that. And the running game looks decent. For at least one guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm assuming Nate Carter's going to figure it out, but the hard part is this offensive line did not make any improvements. And that's what I was most worried about. Now, again, there's a long, long season to go. Uh, but they ended up beating FAU 16-10. to 10. And FAU is not that kind of program. Now they played hard. They they yeah, played well. They got some talented players. Yeah, but, but when you have a barely functional quarterback, yeah, that r- runs like eighty percent of the time and isn't very. Those interceptions were ugly. Yeah, they were so that bad. Cam Fancher threw. It was it was bad. Yeah, and there there wasn't many passes that he even had that looked all that great at all. He hit like three in the second half where it was like, okay, yeah, what is this? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then. So MSU's defense looked pretty solid. Again, it's hard to gauge because FAU didn't do a whole lot. They ran a lot. Yeah. Uh, but at least, you know, MSU seemed like they they got to the ball. They caused some chaos here and there. Um, Halliday still looks good. But we're going to know more this week going into Maryland. And I think that's what I'm most nervous about. Is this is probably going to be the real, not test, but like we might get smacked. Um, and it's probably needed. But again, like I said, the thing that I enjoyed the most is when Aiden really gets a hold of the ball. Man, is it pretty. Yeah. And he fires that thing out like a rocket. And that in and of itself at least makes me excited for Michigan State football for the future. Again, don't know if we're going to see it fully this season, um, but I'm, I'm excited for it. The scary part is, too, what we were nervous about, the receivers. Montori Foster had an awful game. Just awful. He killed the first two. They they were like good drive. They were moving. Mm-hmm. There were drives where things were opening up, and, yeah, he drops a pass, and then he fumbles. Yeah, and... It seemed like Aiden was really trying to rely on him. And Which just, makes sense. Yeah, because, he, yeah, he's the vet there, but it just it didn't work out. I still feel like I, I know their off Again, I know their offense is to run the ball. Uh, they gave Nate Carter 19 carries. Uh, they gave Lynch Adams he had nine, nine carries. carries. Yeah. And he had a really good game. He had 101 yards on those nine carries, which is crazy. Uh, but Nate Carter was very inefficient, two and a half yards a carry. But I want them to just 
I want them to open the offense up a little bit, especially when the running game is struggling. I know you have a young quarterback there, but it's also a point of like, you're playing FAU. You need to try to to do things at this point. Um, I feel like they kind of wanted to. Yeah. But they, they had such a lack of momentum, mm-hmm. and there was, like, no chemistry at all. Yeah. Like, on simple passes, it seemed like, I, I, yeah, it, they, they just weren't connected. And I will say, too, they, they did, again, their offensive line did not hold up. FAU got a lot of pressure, so it forced Aiden to move out of the pocket and – probably just you know hit some check downs but it just it wasn't great I still have a lot of I don't know faith isn't really the the right word either but I have like some some faith I'll just use that word because for lack of better terms that there is talent in the wide receiver room I just I, I need somebody to step up uh, whether it's, you know, Montori Foster just says, okay, I, I had a bad game and he's fine this next game, or if it's somebody else, I don't know. But Nick Marsh had a good catch in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. I thought they would go back to him because yeah. he was getting a, lot, a good amount of time. Yeah, and he's he's another one of those guys that people think could have a breakout season potentially. Um, like I said, I, I still really like uh, – is it? I can't remember his first name, Glover. I always forget. Uh, he didn't have a catch. Yeah, I, so he was the one that yeah. I I kept thinking maybe he could have a physically. A he looks like a guy that can be yeah like that go to fifty fifty ball guy. Mm-hmm. So again, ultimately, I want them to open up the offense a little bit more. Offensive line is still a problem, and that's kind of the linchpin right now because they can't run the ball, so they can't do exactly what they want. But again, I I liked some of the things that I was seeing from Aiden Childs. At times, he definitely looked like he was 18, looked like he was very young and indecisive at times. But, when, like I said, when he got a hold of it, it looked really promising. If if, if the wide receivers can get separation and things like that. But, um, again, now we're looking towards Maryland this week. Maryland had a really good week one. They looked pretty good. And... If Michigan State can pull off this upset, I, I would call it an upset at this point, then that would be mind-boggling, make me feel really good. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but, again, as long as they can stay competitive and just show me some more, like that's that's where we're at with Michigan State is like show me building blocks each week and progress and get better, the simple stuff. Um, I think Jonathan Smith's going to make some adjustments. I think Aiden Childs is going to make some adjustments. And I think they'll be okay. Again, after Maryland, they're going to have Prairie View, which should be a cakewalk again. And that, and then after that, they play Boston College before their their big run of big talent. So we'll see. It's it's going to be a tough season either way. But again, I, I just need to see improvements each and every week. Um, the other team that struggled too within the state, your Wolverines. Let's talk about them. How'd you feel about Game One? Against Fresno State. Uh, the way I felt while watching the game and how I feel now are different. It was mostly emotions. Uh, I'm in a group chat with a lot of uh, friends, people that graduated from the University of Michigan. Mm-hmm. They're just as crazy about it as me. And they were all types of flying hot takes going during the game, calling everybody terrible, saying just, just all types of stuff. Yeah, regular Michigan fan stuff, overreacting. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was overreacting, but at the same time, there were some rough spots. Mm-hmm. There were definitely rough spots. Michigan beat Fresno State thirty to ten, and even though last year they beat East Carolina thirty-one to six, and they had a problem running the ball in that game too, mm-hmm. because teams started taking notice of exactly how they wanted to run the ball. They started stacking the box. And just throwing like most of their defense at two people, the quarterback and the running back. But this is different because the past three years, Michigan has had one of the best O lines in the country. Mm-hmm. And pretty much all their O line either graduated or got drafted. These are all new starters. They brought in a transfer to help a center, Josh, Josh Preeb. 
and you kind of just figure things are going to keep rolling. Mm-hmm. The development has been at a high level. They played so well for so many years. They were really bad against Fresno State. Yeah. The O-line just wasn't good. And I'd honestly put that as the biggest problem I had of quarterback. Mm-hmm. You, when you have a former walk-on quarterback making his first start for the University of Michigan against a team that's not a scrub in Fresno State, mm-hmm. one of the better group of five teams, he needs time to get comfortable and time to figure things out back there. And for 80 to 90% of the game, he didn't have time. And he could never really get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So O-line is the big issue. They couldn't really run the ball until the fourth quarter when Kalel Mullings got going. Speaking of Davis Warren, I honestly expected Alex Orgy would be the first guy out. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are starting to think that in the last few weeks of fall camp, his play just completely fell off the cliff. They built this offense basically for Alex Orgy Mm -hmm. to run this season. And... I think they gave him every chance to win the job. And I don't know if it started in fall camp. My, I was look at insider reports for Michigan, and from the first few days I heard Alex Orgy looked great. Mm-hmm. There must have just been a horrendous fall off after that, and there was no consistency, and Davis Warren was the best option they had. So now they're shifting back to an offense that they – I don't know if they were like fully ready to just go all in on. Because they were all in on Alex Orgy. They didn't go for a portal quarterback. They also didn't go for many receivers in the portal. And in retrospect, those are mistakes in my opinion. I don't know if it's just oversight or they had overconfidence in the team. Mm -hmm. They're coming off a national championship, so of course they have belief in their guys. But there, there are some things that the coaches and the people making decisions in this program missed on. Because Davis Warren, being your starting quarterback, couldn't have been the plan Mm -hmm. to start this season. And maybe he can turn into a guy like, I don't know, um, the walk-on quarterback that played for Georgia got uh, drafted by the Rams. Stetson Bennett? Uh, Yeah, Stetson Bennett was a former walk-on. Baker Mayfield is the highest-level example of a former walk-on that turned into a high-level player. Yeah. Davis Warren has a really good arm. And he can make a lot of throws, and he could be a good quarterback. But he has a long way to go. Mm -hmm. He has a very long way to go. And with that O-line, it's, man, 10-2 and seems like a far shot. And and 9-3 and might be best-case scenario. Yeah. It's going to take a while for this team to mesh, and they got Texas coming. Yeah. They are coming to Ann Arbor, and they're not playing around. Mm -hmm. Their offense is explosive, and their O-line is very good, and their defense – We'll have to see about their defense. They have talent. Yeah. I'm not sure at all phases if they're very good. Right. We'll have to see. But I don't know what Michigan is going to do to challenge them. Yeah, right, exactly. Michigan was pretty vanilla in their offense, so they're going to have to open some things up, some more play action. But outside of Colston Loveland, who's obvious, he's he's one of the best tight ends in in America. Yeah. He had eight catches for almost 80 yards and a touchdown. He was the go-to guy. He's going to be the go-to guy for the rest of the season. Yeah. So that offense is a major work in progress. I still have I still have major belief in the defense. Mm-hmm. Now Fresno put pressure on them and challenged their DBs over and over again with one on one matchups. Yeah, and they worked a few times. Yeah, they they even went and attacked Will Johnson a couple. Yeah, times. they I think Will Johnson he's so confident, and I be, I I fully be, believe he thinks he's the number top corner in the country Mm -hmm. i think he might have got thrown off by how many times they they were attacking him yeah and he kind of leaned off he didn't go as hard as he should have and they took advantage of him a few times Mm -hmm. it was probably the worst game he's had as a starter at michigan but he's so good he still ended up getting that pick six on the screen yeah to close the game but yeah they attacked michigan's dbs uh they attacked the middle of the field the zone defense wink martindale ran left some holes and Fresno State was able to expose that. So they still got some things to clean up on, but hey man, that front seven, they're 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 the real deal. Mm-hmm. Like Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant didn't even show that often. And it was still clear that Fresno State 
couldn't run the ball that often. Like they broke off a few decent runs. Right. But they were focusing on passing, hitting big plays. Yeah. Like Frederick Moore and um these names. I was, the other D lineman number zero for Michigan. Both of them were getting pressure off the edges. Mm. And they were doing a great job. Jay Sean Barham made some mistakes, but he played well. I have confidence in that front seven. Yeah. They're really good. The DBs have to clean some things up. On that last drive where Michigan closed it out, they, Michigan had three picks. <laughs> they got yeah. called back. One of them, the one that should have stood, Jay Sean Barham got the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Yeah. That brought it back. But, yeah, 30 to 10. They barely beat Bowling Green last year, too. So, against lesser teams, they kind of just, like, were messy right. last year. They got they got a lot to figure out. Yeah, and, and it's like you said, they were they playing it safe? I, I think that's kind of the big question. To, I don't know. I've heard people kind of say it. Like, are they trying to hide some of their playbook knowing they had Texas coming in? It's possible Maybe. that's a part of it. Um. So if you're trying to play as vanilla as possible, plus yeah. actually, I mean, they definitely didn't look good either. So that on top of struggling makes them more predictable um, and more prone to mistakes, and maybe that's why the game was so close. Yeah, they maybe they, they threw one deep ball, and Davis Warren put too much air under it. Mm-hmm. It could have been a touchdown, but yeah, too much air. The safety ended up picking it off. Right. It is what it is. So hopefully for you, they do have more in the tank, and they're just holding it off for Texas. Yeah, the obvious plan, they they just wanted to bully Fresno State. It was obvious yeah. from the jump. Mm-hmm. And when they couldn't just straight up bully them, things started getting weird because then Davis Warren couldn't get confident. Yep. And it was just a snowball of yep. what do we do now? Yeah. And up until the fourth quarter, they, they just couldn't figure it out. I was going to say, <laughs> if they didn't get that pick six, it was going to look real scary. Yeah. Real scary. The game might have ended 23-16. to 16. Yeah, which is crazy. But, yeah, Will, Will Johnson pulled off a superstar play mm-hmm. finally. They, they tested him too many times. Yeah. So those are the the fun times of college football yeah. for us right now. And yeah, Michigan has Texas coming. Yeah, I wish they had Arkansas State this week, <laughs> so they could get a real confidence boost. <laughs> but hey, this is what it is. Again, sometimes, like I've said, sometimes it's better to struggle before going into a big game than just blowing your opponent out. Yeah, humbles you a little bit. Texas, on the other hand, they got to play Arch Manning at the end of their game. They uh, took care of business. So. <laughs> We'll see. Um, I didn't watch any other college football besides that. I'll be completely honest. Um, but I did watch the entire highlights of Tedaroa McMillan. And um, listen, man, I'm in love. I'll be honest. He is. <laughs> he he's he's an issue. Mm-hmm. He is six five two ten. Yeah, and has barely any flaws as a receiver. Mm-hmm. Like you, you rarely see guys like that come through right. college, even college football. It's rare that guys that complete at that size come through. Yeah. Like, four, I, I can't remember how many catches. Was I think it, it was 10? 11. Yeah, 11 catches for over 300 yards and four touchdowns yeah. against New Mexico. Yeah. And he made it look easy. Mm-hmm. Like, there, it, it was ridiculous. Right. So, that's a fun one to watch out for. I will probably be catching Arizona games <laughs> for the rest of the season. But um, other than that, I, I didn't watch a whole lot of – college football unfortunately but yeah i can give a few notes before we move on to yeah go for it what, what teams you were, um, were you liking so far oregon struggled i guess that's another one oregon struggled i they it's such a weird game i'm kind of just like dismissing it yeah because most analysts have like won't look deeply into that game and it's just like ah eh, oregon will be fine mm-hmm. so i'm kind of doing the same thing yeah because i still think oregon will be really good but we'll see if that like kind of continues to happen right but iowa has an offense at least for one game yeah so far and kirk ferentz was suspended for a game and they scored 40 points yeah <laughs> hopefully that's not a trend right. hopefully kirk doesn't come but Cade mcnamara i don't know man their first two quarters they looked like iowa the past few years yeah and the second half they just lit up mm-hmm. they have a freshman receiver named reese vanderzee mm-hmm. from iowa he's like 6'4 205 he had two receiving touchdowns, like six catches. So, yeah, good for Iowa. Uh, USC yeah, beat LSU Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Miller and Moss looked great. 
there, DeAnton Lynn, uh, def- form- former defensive coordinator from UCLA, they hired him, brought him across town, and the defense looked actually decent yeah. for the first time for USC in a while. Mm-hmm. So that might be tough for Michigan coming up. They got to play them, I think, week five. It could shake up the Big Ten a little bit. Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, Miami, they could have a Texas-type year. Yeah. Because Cam, they finally have a quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Cam Ward was electric against Florida. Yeah. He lit them up. Made all types of great side throw. I mean, sidearm throws. He's super talented. And Miami just, they look better than they looked in a long time. Right. And Florida didn't look good at all. So, mm-hmm. Billy Napier may be on the hot seat soon. Yeah. Vanderbilt beat Virginia Tech. Oh, okay. And I did not see that. It was... It made me happy watching it because Diego, they got Diego Pavia, who was the quarterback in New Mexico State, and they upset Auburn last year. Hmm. They basically they brought over like multiple coordinators from New Mexico State. They brought over Diego Pavia and a few other players, and they're basically running their offense, hmm. and it worked at least in week one. Yeah, like they they threw a punch at Virginia Tech and caught him off guard, and they kind of recovered in the second half, but Vandy ended up winning in overtime. So. Mm-hmm. It was their first Power 5 win, I think. Their first week one Power 5 win in over a decade. Hmm. So, big time for Vandy. Yeah. Uh, Florida State sucks. Yeah, they do. They're terrible. Mm-hmm. They were ranked 10th to start the season. Yeah. And I'm not putting all the blame on DJU like everybody else is. I still think it he is. He's a big part of the blame. It is pretty funny, though, when you look at his recruiting class. He was, what, number two? Oh, yeah, and it was. Listen, you look back that look at that QB class, the top twenty. It's it's. A I mess. can't remember who number one of that class is, but like CJ Stroud is number three or something. He's in between two Pro Bowl quarterbacks in yeah, the NFL. I'm right thinking now. of another class, but yeah, he DJU was a quarterback where you have to have good things around him mm-hmm. for his talent to show through. Yeah, you have to have like quality skill players, a good O line, and a very good running game. He had that at Oregon State last year. Yeah. And he had a good season. Florida State has none of that. Yeah, they lost everything. They lost everything. They try to replenish it again in the transfer portal, and it looks like they missed on almost everything. Yeah. And that's becoming a trend with a lot of these teams that are just trying to re go through the portal every year. Right. You, it, you get lucky maybe one or two times. Mm-hmm. And besides that, it doesn't hit a lot. And Florida State has missed – and missed, and DJU looks bad because everything else around him is bad. Mm-hmm. The whole line is bad. The running backs are bad. The <laughs> wide receivers aren't aren't very good. Yeah, and the defense just looks soft. Mm-hmm. Like the O line and D lines both are just getting ran through. Boston yeah. College like bullied them. Yeah, and they were missing like a few, Christian Mahogany left. He's with the Lions now. Mm-hmm. They're missing another guy from injury. And they still just walked through Florida State for the most part. Yeah. Like, I I, I don't. Yeah, it was ugly. bad. We it's knew. Bad like, State. everybody knew Florida State was going to struggle this year. But they didn't know to this potential level. Um, Yeah, it's it's scary times. Yeah. Besides that. um, Ohio State struggled a little bit. It, it, it was a weird game. For a minute. Listen, Jeremiah Smith looked like a monster, mm. as he might be. So, I don't even care. Yeah, I really don't even care. Akron hung in it for two quarters, so congratulations, yeah. Akron. You got your check, and you still got blown out. It was fun for a minute. You showed some heart, yeah. And then Ohio State still put up 52 or whatever it was. Yeah, they they put out Akron's quarterback out of the game, and it was pretty much done after that. Yeah. But Georgia's still Georgia. Dabo didn't get any tr- uh, transfers. He still won't get transfers. Yeah. And Clemson looks kind of mediocre, mm-hmm. and Georgia just manhandled him. Yeah. Uh, Penn State's offense looked improved. Yeah, they did. I yeah. I guess I did catch a little bit of that game going on. Yeah. They brought over Andy Kotelnicki, the O coordinator from Kansas, mm. who helped get them back on track. And, yeah, Drew Aller looked pretty good. Harrison Wallace looked like could be a breakout wide receiver. So, yeah, Penn State just manhandled West Virginia at their place. So, yeah, pretty good look for them. Besides that, mainly, yeah, most of the top teams played FCS teams. Mm-hmm. Got got their numbers, blew teams out. Yeah, not enough, not a lot to a lot to write home about from week one outside of those and a few primetime games. Right. Notre Dame beat Texas A and M. Yeah, a pretty ugly game. A lot of defense. 
Notre Dame's offense did look improved because Texas A&M's defense is supposed to be really good. So, yeah, yeah, Texas A&M couldn't get much going on offense. Good win for Notre Dame in College Station, Texas. Yeah. Yep. And now we got the big week this week with Michigan, Texas being the big noon kickoff. Yeah. Um, and and we'll see. We'll see what happens. I I will watch that game. Yeah. Tennessee and NC State play at seven thirty. That'll be that should be a good one. Hmm. Uh, Boise State and Oregon play. That'll be a little interesting. So yeah, still some some primetime games. Texas, Michigan being the biggest one. Right. And I expect Michigan to lose. I think it'll be kind of like a slow down game. Yeah. I think Michigan's defense will keep them in most of it. Yeah. But Texas might end up winning like 21 to like 13 or something like that. Hmm. I don't expect it to be a blowout, but. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, Michigan's offense just isn't there yet. Right. Yeah. And they got to figure it out. Their defense is going to have to hold them down yeah. for a while. Unless, like you, unless they're hiding things, like you said. Right. And some people may think, which would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, if they're just hiding a bunch of stuff. It's kind of wishful thinking, but I, yeah. again, the they've way, done it before in big matchups. They played. They pull out plays that they never played. They played so boring. There's got to be something else in that playbook yeah. for sure. So, we'll see. But it doesn't mean it's going to work either way. So, all right. What's your uh, prediction on MSU Maryland? <sighs> I'm scared. I'll be honest. <laughs> Maryland's offense looked pretty good. Um, and man, I think it could be something like, I mean, I guess that, that wouldn't be that bad, like 30, 17, but maybe with a late Michigan state score, I was going to say like 31, 13. Yeah. So I, I'm picking Maryland, but I think maybe Michigan state gets a, a late score that makes it look closer than it was, I guess. But Michigan schools start one and one. Yeah. Could be rough, like nice. I said. Yeah. So we'll see. But um the one team in Michigan that we can all say we're excited about. The Detroit Lions. But we'll get to that. You might need to say that one more time because I don't know what year it is. The De- is it nineteen ninety one? The Detroit Lions are a top five Super Bowl pick around the country. Is it nineteen fifty? No. <laughs> It's not. So We're the, in the curse Super is Super Bowl era. You're saying the curse is gone? Well, is ever, that what you're saying? You know, ever since Peyton Manning stepped on that field, hey. maybe, maybe anything is possible. In the words of Kevin Garnett. Yeah, when they they lifted the curse, supposedly, and it, it's been working ever since. So I guess all we needed was Peyton Manning to <laughs> come to Ford Field. I guess. <laughs> um, so. We'll get to them in a minute. We'll do our picks, and we'll talk about some of the key games since we have a little extra time today. So kicking off the NFL, we have Baltimore playing the Super Bowl. Stinking champions, Kansas City Chiefs. And it's at Kansas City once again. And I couldn't be more excited about this game, even though it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I am I was telling my coworker the other day, she hates – Kansas City at this point I am starting to get there you know they've they've hit that threshold (laughs) where they've won enough but they're different in the fact they're similar to me for like the Warriors like I like watching Patrick Mahomes play football but I am starting to get tired of his winning so I can't really be rooting for the Chiefs anymore um but I still enjoy watching that team and the things that they do um in the game. But I think they're going to be similar this year of like, they're going to start slow. I I think they're just, they're just coasting at this point. Um, So my initial pick, I'm picking the Ravens to come in there with Derrick Henry newly added. And they're just going to run all over. How many carries are going to give him like 11? No, I think they're (laughs) going to, well, I guess they might want to save Derrick Henry. So they might not. I I see no scenario where they overdo it with Derrick Henry. Yeah. One. I don't yeah. think they're about to try to prove something. Right. Um, I'm excited to just see what the, the the Baltimore offense does with Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. Um, because either – and then they have Mark Andrews coming back too. Who, so it could randomly like open up a lot of things for Zay Flowers on the outside, which would be cool. So I'm just excited to see how their offense does. Their defense should be just as good. Um, the only thing I would say about Baltimore is they did lose – 
two offensive linemen uh, this offseason, so maybe that's a problem for them. But I'm going to go with Baltimore for my first pick of 2024-25 season. Listen, uh, this this may be conservative. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care, man. I'm going with the the returning champs. <laughs> like, I I thought the Chiefs would lose at least like twice in the playoffs. Yeah, and some they just kept winning, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. Some type of voodoo football magic. Yeah, things just happen and they win. Right. And I I'm just I'm going with the same thing. Okay. It's barely it's barely logic. It's it's I don't I don't know. Yeah. Just Mahomes magic. Yeah. I mean, they have that aura around them where it's yeah. just like you can't count them out at this point. It's like the, how weak their receiving core was last mm-hmm. year. And it's way better this year. It, and they still won a Super Bowl. It's way better, but we don't really know what their receiving core is going to necessarily look like because Marquise Brown is out for week one at least. Yeah. Might be out one more week maybe. Um, and then they have Xavier Worthy, a rookie, and Rasheed Rice who, you know, Probably he had a strong sus- start to the Probably year. Probably gets suspended next yeah. year. But he had a good season last year mm-hmm. to end the season. But it's only his second year. So, like, where is he going to progress? So, there's a lot of question marks still in this offense. But it doesn't matter. And their defense is still pretty solid. They lost LeJarius Sneed, but they're still strong up front. Um, they get a lot of pressure on opponents. So, I don't know. I, I agree. Like, you can't really count them out. So, Okay. First primetime game tomorrow night. Then we have a Friday night game. A Friday night game. Where is this game taking place, Joey? Not not in the U.S. It's not in the U.K. This is this is new. Not, not even in, in Mexico City. Not in Canada. I'm, they they haven't had a game in Canada. No, I don't think so. That is so weird. Like, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. But let's get some CFL NFL partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Something cool for the people. Some collab. But Green Bay and Philadelphia. Technically, Philadelphia is the home team, but they're in yeah. Brazil. Listen, we're we're not playing football. No, American we're playing, football. Playing American football. Um, apparently, uh, had to up security because of player concerns. Many players are saying things, they don't want their families there. Things get wild. Yeah, <laughs> at football games, and not just Brazil, but South America in general. Right. Like they, yeah, mm-hmm. it's serious. Yeah, and Brazil is just—it's a big country. They've had some crime rates issues in the past i mean doesn't mean that it's not a, a pretty place but anywhere you go really you know is always going to have some bad stuff but it is crazy to think that the nfl is kind of forcing this um expansion of whatever they're trying to do exactly i don't know um make it a global game yeah that they would put their clientele basically in somewhat of danger to me, I don't even know what stadium. I gotta look at what stadium they're playing in. Yeah, um, this one is is a weird matchup too, though, because Green Bay. There are How, people yeah. saying that they could win the division. How do you predict the game in Brazil? I don't know. Like game games in London are always like weird and just all over the place. Right. At least there's not you know some crazy jet lag. Like there's not a crazy time zone difference. Like yeah. when you go over to London and things. Did they have a game in Germany last year? Yes. Okay. Um, they might be doing it again this year. I'm not sure, but um, that wasn't the Toy Story game, was it? Mm, I don't. Think I know so. it was in the UK. The uh, Toy maybe, Story game. Maybe it was. <laughs> I don't remember. I think so. But um, Green Bay trying to build off of what they how they ended last season, and then Philadelphia trying to forget about well, how their season ended last year. They made an addition to get Saquon Barkley. They lost Jason Kelsey to retirement. But their offensive line is still one of the best in the league. They're still one of the best offenses in the league. I'm going to go what I think is chalk, and I'm just going to take Philadelphia, and I think they're going to get right back on their track. I think people are overhyping Green Bay a little bit, and it's not just because they're an NFC North opponent. I just, I'm not there yet. I yeah. I get it. Jordan Love had a great ending to the last season, but I just, I don't know how this offense is going to work. Who says they're going to be better than than Chicago? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people, but I'm I'm kind of with you. Like I think Green Bay and Chicago are going to be contenders this year. Um, that they could be tougher outs in the division, but they're fighting to try and top the Lions. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see what Josh Jacobs does with this offense. Like a, a younger back for them could be good, and then they have a bunch of talented wide receivers. Their defense is much improved, so I can see where they're at. 
I just don't know if I fully am invested in Jordan Love just yet. But he's definitely potentially there. But I'm going to go with Philadelphia. I'm also going Philly. Okay. I I think the Jalen Hurts, Saquon, Barkley combo will be pretty dangerous to start. Yeah. I don't know how consistent it will be. I don't know how healthy they can stay. And I don't know how good this offensive line can maintain to be. Like Jordan Mailata, we know how good he is. Yeah. It didn't Lane Johnson retire? Or is he still there? No, I don't think he did. Okay, Lane People Johnson's thinking still he there. Might. Yeah. Yeah. Like they they got some older guys, but Jordan Mailata's kind of younger. Mm-hmm. They still have some pieces. But yeah, how long can they stay up? Um yeah, I, I just think that combo is gonna be something mm-hmm. to see from the beginning. Because just, just the thought of the, a read option of them, too, is just so dangerous. Right. And, like, who do you key on mm-hmm. each play when you see Jalen Hurts go yeah. and put it in his stomach? It, it's similar to Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in that first game. Like, that combination just sounds crazy to be able to do. And then I, I think the other big question is, are they going to stick to the tush push or are they going to let Saquon run the ball in? I think they'll get – I don't know. They'll kind of get probably get creative with it. Right. Yeah, so they don't telegraph things. Yeah. Um, and then we get into the Sunday slate, which I can't wait to just sit there and watch Red Zone for seven hours. Um, well, we start with Pittsburgh at Atlanta. Yeah. I'm buying the hype. I'm going with the Falcons. You're I, buying the Dirty Birds. Yeah. Oh, boy. I am. Pittsburgh. Big Kirk Cousins guy, are, are you? Uh, I mean. Is that your second favorite quarterback? Uh, no. <laughs> but I do have some investment in Drake London this year in fantasy. So uh, okay. that's part of it. Um, but I, I think Atlanta would be a fun team to watch if, if everything hits. Pittsburgh, gross. Gross. <laughs> that's it? That's just... <laughs> I, that's the analysis. It, I oh, would be more intrigued yuck. if it was Justin Fields. I'll be honest. Hmm. That's just how I feel. How do you feel about the Steelers as a former fan of Pittsburgh? If this game was in Pittsburgh, I think I would have taken Pittsburgh. Because okay. are, these are the type of matchups where it's like... 13 to like seven for three quarters. Yeah. And then for some reason, Pittsburgh just has some great drive Mm -hmm. and they win 14, 13. Yeah. But I I don't think they're going to pull that out in Atlanta. Right. I, people hate on Kirk cousins a lot (laughs) and he can be mediocre at times, Mm -hmm. but you look at his stats over the past like five, six years. Yeah. Well, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the league to start last season before he got hurt. (laughs) He is, him and Dak Prescott aren't far off to me. They're yeah. somewhat the same quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, if you put Kirk in Dallas, I think you get most of the same things. Yeah. And I think the explosion of this offense will appear mm-hmm. to, to start the season now. You got T.J. Watt running after Kirk Cousins, which will be terrifying. Yeah. But who else are you afraid of in the in Pittsburgh's front seven? Honestly. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, Cam Hayward is gone. I, I don't even know who Pittsburgh's defensive tackles are. Like, I would have to look on their roster. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't know if there's a fear factor with Pittsburgh's defense right now. Right. And Mika Fitzpatrick is back there, but is the secondary overall going to be that good? Yeah. I don't know. I think Atlanta's going to test their de- their secondary especially. Yeah. They're going to take some shots. And Atlanta has you know. B. John Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, even Darnell Mooney yeah. is a now, quality at this receiver. Point, it's, it's the idea of Kyle Pitts at this point. Yeah. yeah. Which I still believe That's in the idea point. of Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I still believe. But yeah, I, I think they take some shots. I think they hit on a few of them. And then you got Bijan and um, Tyler Algier. Yeah. You got them two good guys to bring you home. So right. yeah, I'll take Atlanta too. Okay. Um, then we have Arizona at Buffalo. Arizona, kind of a, a team that people are getting excited about because they're young. Um, they got Kyler Murray, drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride, had a really good season last year, made a few improvements here and there, um, but their defense is still awful. I was about to say that's enough of the positives on Arizona. <laughs> yeah. That, that's about enough. Um, Buffalo also had a big turnover of their offense. They did. Um, their Keon wires. Coleman might be their number one because mm-hmm. what do you really expect from and Curtis if it's Samuel? Not, if it's not Keon Coleman, it's either Curtis Samuel or Khalil Shakir. I, I have some Khalil Shakir stock. In yep. the back of my brain. I have some back there. Or honestly. I believe if you give him more targets, he could be something. Honestly, their number one receiver could be Dalton Kincaid. True. That is that is a good point. So, The unfortunate part is Buffalo also lost, lost a lot of pieces um, to their defense. So, we'll see how they, they that, go. That is the concerning part. But yeah. I think the ultimate factor in this game for me is Josh Allen. 
and I think Buffalo is going to win just because of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give him three total touchdowns and one pick week one. Just okay. one. Yeah. Not, 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 a multi, not a multi-pick game yet. Yeah. Um, Tennessee at Chicago. This is interesting. Yeah, this is a weird one. The Mayo Man versus the 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 Hope of Chicago. <laughs> the Painted Nails versus the Mayo Man. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, both kind the of Mayo Man versus the Painted. Fun teams to see though, because again, <laughs> Chicago's got a lot of weapons now yeah. that they've added. Their defense was really good last year, and then Tennessee they got Calvin Ridley. They added Tony Pollard to their backfield. Like I think their offense could be better. I don't know how improved their defense is going to be, um, but it could be a little bit better. I think this is going to be another one where I'm not fully buying into the hype yet, and I'm going to actually go with Tennessee. And I don't know exactly why. I just feel like Will Levis is just going to air it out, and DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley are going to be maybe too much for the Bears. Now Jalen Johnson is going to shut down Is DeAndre Hopkins starting? I mean, is, is he playing? I believe so. I think he's supposed to be healthy. Oh, it says questionable. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to be in line to play, but I, I guess I don't know for sure. Yeah. I'm going to. He's stick. questionable, and uh, Keenan Allen is questionable. Yeah, I'm still going to stick with Tennessee. I just, I don't know. I think we're going to see Caleb Williams struggle just a little bit out of the gate. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Chicago wins at home to okay. start. Yep. I think I think he will have ups and downs, but I think he I think he could get off to a hot start and have those Chicago fans thinking the second coming is alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, he has a few of those games where yeah, he does too much running around, throws some picks. Right. But yeah, I, th- I think he starts off well. Okay. I don't know if he like fully outplays Will Levis, but I think he's probably right on the same level. Yeah. Especially talent-wise, he's yeah. Right. Mhm. Like Will Levis has maybe has a bigger arm, but the way Caleb can throw is a different, yeah, different thing. Now we we talked about them last week, so we don't have to go too much on this game. New England at Cincinnati. I put you down for Cincinnati. Uh, New England Chill is back. New England's a mess. Even if Jamar Chase doesn't play, I think that's still wild that they're still trying to figure that out. Um, but if Jamar Chase doesn't play, Cincinnati has T Higgins. I think they'll be just fine. Joe Burrow is supposed to be healthy. Yeah, New England's just That's a mess. The throwing Drake May into this would have been a mess. I don't hate Gerard Mayo starting, sacrificing, I'm sorry, sacrificing Jacoby Brissett yeah. to the football gods. Fair enough. Listen, you've had a good career, Jacoby. It is what it is at this point. Yeah. But, yeah, just give give Drake May some time to sit and watch and learn. Mm. At least half the season, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we got Houston at Indianapolis. People are high. On Houston. Listen, I, I before you even got to Houston, I was going to say the fantasy hype on Anthony Richardson. I've seen yeah. a lot of people drafting him as like their number one quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm, and, I'm, I'm still not sure if I'm all in. Yeah. And most of the fantasy side is just because of the rushing upside. Like that helps your fantasy teams. So they don't care as much about the throwing side as much. Um, but I would say in, in real football, it is still a bit of a concern. But Jonathan Taylor's healthy right now. And the two of them combined, again, sounds like a crazy combination to be able to have on your team. But again, Houston made a ton of additions on their offense and on their defense. I don't know. It's hard to go against them. But I'm going to. Going for an early <laughs> swing while I have the time. Oh, boy. I'm this taking is the, the, I, I, don't, I don't want any of your secrets of your strategy, but it's interesting. I'm going for the Colts at home, hmm. and I think it's just going to be one, one of those things where similar to like the Chiefs losing to the Lions last year, where it's kind of like, whoa, I thought this was this was the team. And they're just Houston's gonna be just fine, but they might just, you know, they might be a little too amped up for the hype. Some revenge from the playoff game. Yeah. I don't I don't know how a big fan of Houston's uniforms. <laughs> I going I based off of uniforms. I don't like the I don't like the light blue with the navy blue and then you throw the red in. It's 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 strange to me. Yeah, they have a lot of weird alternatives that they added. Yeah. Like they, they could have just updated what they already did. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I'm going with the Texans. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe in CJ Stroud. Yeah. Nico Collins is set to have an even bigger year. Mm-hmm. Stefan Diggs was named a captain. 
Yeah. So I don't know if that's just like media fluff or right. if Make he feel really, good. yeah, like maybe he is just like a really good mentor for those young guys. And hey, man, that that receiving core looks deadly. Yeah. It, it on paper, it's it's crazy. I don't know how they're gonna yeah. split the touches necessarily. Yeah. But and you got Joe Mixon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Will Anderson and Derek Stingley. Like I I I'm in on what they're doing, and I, I think they go into Indianapolis and get a win. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you. I'm again, like I said, I'm going for a kind of an early swing, hoping for the best. Um, then we have Jacksonville at Miami. These are two teams too that I, I don't know how to gauge. I feel like Miami's definitely going to take a step back, but I don't know if it's going to be like a big step back. Their defense might be awful though, because um, they lost a lot of guys. And then Jacksonville, they started off the season last year so good. And they just kind of faltered down the stretch. Like, are they going to be able to get back to that? They have to figure out who their number one receiver is. They have Brian Thomas now, along with Christian Kirk. Um, they, they got a lot of stock in uh, Parker Washington. I like him. Do they? Second year receiver. Well, Jacksonville fans, it's, it's a lot of word that he's improved most out of the receiving core. Well, like, he's, he's, he's gotten stronger. He's still fast. He has, like, go and get it ability. Yeah. We did see the one. I'm not game saying he's the him. number one. Yeah, we did see the game from him last year where he went kind of crazy. Um, and then they have Travis Etienne in the back backfield. Who's their tight end? Evan Ingram. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Which uh, he actually had a good season last year. Mm. I'm gonna go with another upset. I'm gonna go with Jacksonville. Early swings. It's not usually what I do, so maybe and this is good reason. I thought about going with a swing, but since you went with it, I'm going Miami. Okay. Miami's going to put up at least 35 points. Yeah, this Book could it. be a big shootout, to Book be honest. It. Yeah. That'd be – I'd like a few shootouts week one. Right. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. Um. Then we have the boring bowl, Carolina versus the Saints. Can I pick first? Yeah, go it's, for it's, it. It's, it's my first of the season. Can yeah. I pick first? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you can Listen, pick man. a couple first. Some people, lost, some people lost hope. Some people lost faith. Just listen, just and because CJ Stroud yeah. blew up, had one of the best rookie seasons in league history. That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Bryce Young was thrown into an absolute mess. And he's had to recover. He's had to get his mental back. Yeah. And I still believe in Bryce Young. I love Xavier Leggett. Mm-hmm. I love what he could become. I really like uh, Zatavian Sanders. I think mm. that's his name. Yeah, the the rookie from Texas, the tight end. He's where yeah. his number zero. I think he can be really good. I I just I don't know, man. There, David Tepper is one of the worst owners in sports. <laughs> he is. Yeah, but I like their new coach. I like his energy, mm-hmm. and I still believe in Bryce Young, and I like their young talent. So I'm picking the Panthers. Okay. To beat the Saints, and I until. New Orleans starts to play Spencer Rattler, I might pick them to lose all the most of their games. I'm done with the Derek Carr yeah. experience. I was gonna I say, used to believe in him. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna say I'm I've also been known to be like a Derek Carr truther, and it's been really hard these last listen, couple of years. Listen, Derek Carr, then Carson Wentz, and then Russ, they all failed me. Yeah. I'm afraid to have a favorite quarterback at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid. Um, I think just for pick's sake, I'm gonna go with New Orleans. But I don't really have a backing for it, and I kind of with you. I kind of hope Carolina bounces back. I a have little Taysom bit. on my fantasy bench. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him do some things. Um, then we got another snooze fest. We got Sam Darnold versus Daniel Jones, Minnesota <sighs> at New York Giants. Oh my God, this is now this the, is the, uh, the weird thing too is both have pretty good defenses right now. Like the Giants added Brian Burns, um, the Vikings have added some young talent. Like, it could be a weird defensive game. You know the best case scenario of this game to me? Sam Darnold and Daniel Jones both actually, like, play well. Yeah. But neither of them can convert. Mm-hmm. And it ends up being, like, a 10-7 to 7 game yeah. where both quarterbacks are I, – I want it to be something weird. Yeah. Like, don't – I hope it's just not bad or a snooze. Right. Like, let's make it something interesting. I hope that, like, Justin Jefferson and Malik Neighbors go back and forth or something like that. That would yeah. be fun. But uh, I don't know if it's going to yeah. go Brian like Burns that. also might – uh, take Sam Darnold's head off because yeah. him and Kayvon Thibodeau are on the edges. Yeah, and it could be crazy. I don't want to be the quarterback. The first quarterback on the schedule 
Yeah. Seeing them too. Right. He might see Ghost again. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't bring Listen, that back. Just throw it up to 18 and close your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> throw yeah. it up and see what happens. Hey, they they got um uh Aaron Jones now. Yeah. So maybe that could help. Maybe. Yeah. He's like 29. I hope, He's or still good, though. Yeah. He's still productive. It's not like a Dalvin Cook situation where no. the Cowboys have two washed running backs. Yeah. So it sounds like you're leaning towards the Giants, huh? Uh, <laughs> no? Okay. Yes. I'm going with the G-Men because it's at home. Okay. If he was in Minnesota, I might have taken Sam Darnold. God, picking <laughs> Sam Darnold is something else. But I'm going with Minnesota. I will take Malik Neighbors having a good first game against the Minnesota secondary. Okay. Who's Minnesota's best DB? Um, I hope it's not Lewis Seen. Who is it? No, they cut him. Oh, they, oh, they cut him. Yeah, because remember, it's part of the whole Georgia yeah, thing. I don't know who Minnesota's best DB is. I'm sure they have a few good guys, but I don't know if they have anybody to write home about. Dan, Daniel Jones, if they have a more improved offensive line, maybe you could make something happen. I don't know why I'm getting more quiet. No, maybe, it could, maybe it could happen. I don't know. Like, Let's just move on from this game. Just, just <laughs> I, make your pick. Let's did go. you pick Minnesota? I picked yeah, the Giants. I picked Minnesota. Yeah. Replacing Saquon Barkley with Devin Singletary is kind of rough, but it is what it is. Yeah. They um, should have traded him. Then we got Las Vegas at the Chargers. This is a weird matchup. Yeah. You got Gardner Minshew and then first-year Jim Harbaugh with mm-hmm. the Chargers. Yeah, Justin Herbert should be good to go. He's had some plantar fascia issues, which is a little bit nervy. Um, Chargers are healthy for now again, but we know they get hurt all the time. Um, I'm going to stick to the Chargers because, I don't know, I like Justin Herbert, and I've basically sworn off of the Raiders because I was a believer in the Raiders for a long time, and they just never get it done. I'm going to go Chargers. I think that offense is going to be damn near like Michigan is right now, a work in progress. Yeah. You got Justin Herbert, but who is his reliable target? Minnesota. Sorry to cut you off, but Minnesota has Stephon Gilmore and Byron Murphy. I apologize, Minnesota. As their DBs. You could be pretty good. (laughs) At least your first two. They also have Shaquille Griffin back there. Um, Fabian Moreau. That shows how much I know. I knew they about added. Minnesota. I knew they added people. I they forgot still, they signed Stephon Gilmore. They still have Harrison Smith and Josh Metellus back there. Uh, well, they they might be okay. They have Andrew Van Ginkle that they got for linebackers. They also drafted Dallas Turner. You know what? You know what? Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. I'm not. I'm not going to switch my pick. I'm losing confidence. I'm still picking the Giants. <laughs> Go on to the game we were talking about. I'm picking the Raiders. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going Gardner Minshew and that weird crew. Minshew mania. Yeah. I, I think their faith in Antonio Pierce, I think, I think it's still there. Yeah. They play hard for him. Uh, I think – Um. Uh, I forgot the name of their new running back, number three. Zamir White. Yeah, I think Zamir White could be really good. I don't know what the Chargers are going to look like. Yeah. I just don't know, mm-hmm. especially on offense. I mean, like, I think, Is Lad McConkey going to be your guy? I think Josh Palmer is going to be their guy is early. Is Johnston going to be your guy? No. Does he have hands they, now? <laughs> well, he might be on the field. Because if he has hands, he could be dangerous. He might be on the field because DJ Shark, I think, is still injured. I forgot, I didn't even know he was on the Chargers. Yeah. So they have the weird um, wide receiver room where they have um, Josh Palmer, Lad McConkey, Quentin Johnston, DJ Shark. I think they kept... <sighs> is that the worst receiving core in the league? I think they kept Brendan Rice. Uh, okay. But the funny thing is, I know that they cut Cornelius, Cornelius Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, I know they cut him. Because <laughs> they cut like three Michigan guys but that they had in the team or something like that. That might be the like lowest receiving core in the league. Yeah. At the bottom. Yeah, it's weird. You got you to gotta really hope Brendan Rice emerges. Yeah. And I think he's he's talented enough to do it. Mm-hmm. They need to play him. And they do have Justin Herbert throwing it to him. So It'll be hilarious if Brendan Rice is better than Quentin Johnson. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anything is possible, though. Um, yeah, Raiders. Next up, we got Denver at Seattle. Bo Nix. I'm going with Seattle. I think Bo Nix will surprise people, but I just don't think there's enough talent on that team. And I think Seattle might, they might have a really good season. Come on. <laughs> don't do Seattle. this. 
Seattle. I'm not. I'm. I'm waiting to do some crazy picks. I'm waiting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dallas at Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. No, I'm. I'm not second guessing it. Okay. I think that Cleveland defense might make them look. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna piss off some Cowboys fans. Yeah. I My, think Dak might throw a couple picks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go Dallas. Boo. Only because it's Terrible. the regular season. You'll regret that. I. I don't believe in Deshaun Watson. Neither do I. And I would rather but. take, I would rather take Dallas's backfield than Deshaun Watson. I think I'm t- I'm I'm betting on Cleveland's defense at home. That's what I'm betting on. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Washington at Tampa Bay. Jaden Daniels, rookie quarterback, taking on Baker Mayfield and Tampa Bay. You go first. I'm taking Washington just because I'm a big I'm a Jaden fan. Wow, you are taking swings this first week. Yeah, I don't know how it's gonna Jeez. go. Jeez, I'm just hoping on the week one oddities. I'm I'm going Tampa. Okay. Now there there's a chance Baker comes out and doesn't look great. It happens from time to time. Mm-hmm. And Jaden Daniels could look like RG three two point oh. <laughs> but I I don't know. I for some reason I just trust Tampa Bay in week one. Yeah. I mean it's smart. They made the playoffs yeah. last year, so And it's Washington, so who knows? Yeah, Washington's defense is still probably a mess. So that's that's the big nerve. Yeah. Um Sunday night football. The Rams. And Lions, part two. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Matthew Stafford gave it, gave us everything he could yeah. in the playoff game. And I, I think it's going to be probably another shootout. I'm hoping that we win a little bit more decisively, though. Um, And I'm just excited. Like, there's really not a whole lot to say. Both teams are pretty healthy. We don't have to deal with Aaron Donald anymore, though. He's gone. He's retired. And... The Rams' defense just might not be very good. And the Lions' defense looks, on paper, much improved. So, if you take those two things into account, it's looking pretty good for your boys. Not going to pick against the Lions. Taking the Lions. And I'm not going to say much more. I'm just excited about this game. I'm so glad that it's Sunday night. I get to lock in, focus on only that game, and just enjoy the ride. I, again, I'm really hoping for a JMO touchdown. That would be that would imagine, send imagine field. first drive deep ball JMO touchdown. Yeah, that would be electric. Or like four catches the first drive and he finishes it off with a touchdown. It'd be that'd be electric. Yeah, but I'm assuming it's going to be another fairly close game, and Detroit might have to make something happen at the end of the game. We cannot let Matthew Stafford win at Ford Field. We will never hear. The end of it from Kelly. I don't think Kelly. I don't think Kelly and the kids will be at. They're this not. Yeah. They're not. They've already they're not said they're not. Yeah. Good. Stay at home. <laughs> be scared. <laughs> anyway, you're not going with the Rams, right? I just have to Hell ask. Hell no. Just to be professional. Hell no. I'm not going with the Rams. All right. And our Monday night game, the rematch from last year. Aaron Rodgers, will he take the flag? Out onto the field. I, man, he's going to terrify every Jets fan <laughs> in the world if he does that again. Uh, Jets at 49ers. Hey, homecoming for Aaron. Yeah. The place everybody thought he might go to before he ended up as a Jet. Mm-hmm. I'm not picking the Jets. Okay. Come on. If Aaron, Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers gets hit hard like twice, is there a chance his body might like snap in half? I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen to him mm-hmm. if he takes somewhat of a beating. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, similar to the words of LeBron, Christos, this is for you. <laughs> the Jets, I'm picking the Jets, and the only reason is I think that because of all the contract issues for the 49ers, like they, they just. Got their offensive line fully intact now. Brandon Ayuk hasn't been really practicing. Maybe there's some lag there. They haven't gotten their full reps together. Christian McCaffrey hasn't been practicing because he's been injured. I think that the 49ers just might get off to a slow start. And I think the Jets have a good enough defense that they can take advantage of that. And then whatever Aaron Rodgers does, he does. I don't know if he's going to like lift them to the win. Um but we'll see. 
I'm just going to go with the Jets because I think the 49ers just have had too much of an off-season craziness, and the Jets have been pretty much ready to go. So, Chris, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Absolutely no. Can't do it. <laughs> Not the 49ers. Yeah. Even with all the, some of the questions they have. Right. San Francisco all the way. Fair enough. And that's your week one NFL picks. Now there's nothing left but to enjoy. Now, next week we'll look at my record and just see the wins piling up. So you're getting too confident already. I I got to play into it a little bit. I feel like that's not a good thing. I got to play into it a little bit. We'll see. The, uh, the sixth place showboats as we call them. Yes. Week's fantasy. <laughs> Gotta team. shoot higher <laughs> yeah. than last year. So hopefully your week of NFL goes well. I have three fantasy teams that I'm gonna be watching, so I can't let the emotion of my fantasy team get me bring me down from the excitement of just being able to watch NFL football again. That's that's my mentality going into it. We'll see how it plays out though. Um but yeah. Week one in the books. Next week we'll kind of recap uh more college football. Get right into week two of the NFL season, and we're just turning out the football. And I'm excited. This has been Views from the Sideline. We'll see you guys next week. Shouts out to the Tigers, four and a half away from the playoffs.